Flying Big Blue bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talking here We have the power. No, we're not really. We don't have the power. We had a big storm here in the Northeast. We got the generator going. Hooked up to the uh, hooked up the internet and everything to the generator because I just I figured out I, I just remembered how to do that. Um, so you know what? we're gonna churn out a video here really quickly. I might do a stream tonight at nine as long as the generator power holds out. But the generator power will hold out because I got plenty of gas. Everyone knows that I'm a Malik Willis fan. That I want to take draft. I want to take Malik Willis either at five and seven or seven, and of course I want to bring him into the fold for the Giants because I already know. Malik Willis. Bring him the boom. He's going to bring the boom into the NFL. He's going to show this league what Vic Ultralight is all about. But you know what? The question is, what happens if Malik Willis doesn't go to the Giants? What happens if someone grabs him in the top 10? What happens if someone grabs him in the top two or three? What are we going to do now? I don't know. I, I can't sit there with Daniel Jones being the heir apparent for the fourth. He's been the heir. Daniel Jones has been the heir apparent for the fourth year in a row now. And I started looking through some of the other quarterbacks. And, you know, I, I spun the wheel and I landed on Matt Corral. And I know he's an old Miss guy. We had some success with an old Miss guy. His name is Eli something or other. I don't remember. But I wanted to do a little brief overview of Matt because I started looking into some film the other day and I was trying to do a video about it this morning. But like I said, we lost power last night, like at four in the morning. So, um, He's got, he's got some interesting traits, very interesting traits. I, I don't think he is going to be a NFL starter right away. I think they will, you know, they, I think he's going to like Malik Willis. He's going to take some time to maturate. Um, I think some teams that are going to be like cold weather teams are going to have some questions about his ability to throw the ball down the field. Or if he's going to have the sufficient arm strength to do that. Because that, that's always been his question at Old Miss. And we're going to find out a little bit more about it at the Combine. I mean, we, you know, during his pro day as, as well. I think he will be a starting quarterback one day. But like I said, I don't think it's going to be right away. He had a fairly good season. He had a good season. He's not as, not as good as the season as he had uh, 2020. But he did complete 67% of his passes for 3,343 yards. Average pass play was 9.2 because you know I always look at the average pass plays. 20 touchdowns, five interceptions. He did some things better in 2021 than he did in 2022. Um, and it's interesting because I'm going to people are going to be like, what are you talking about? His accuracy to me was a little bit better last year. And then you'll say, well, in 2020, Tim, he completed 70.9% of his passes. Accuracy is not always about, about completion. It's about, it's about putting the ball in the right place. And he understand, and that's what his thing, and that's the big thing about it. his ball placement improved exponentially last season. He he, and that's what, it, and like I said, accuracy isn't isn't just about completions. It's about being able to place the ball where the receiver can catch it and be a threat after the catch, and where the defensive player cannot come up with it. And he does that well. He does it well. He avoided. Uh, he, he really did avoid multiple turnover games. Like kind of, kind of was his bugaboo last year in 2020. Um, so, I mean, it's, 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 it, you know, like I said, so he's, he's doing, he's doing the things better from one year into the next, which is what, what you want to see. The kid has always had, a kid has always had good poise in the pocket. He keeps his composure. Even when he's being blitzed. You know, he helped rally his team a lot this year or last year, I should say. But he's a guy that he just has a nice composure in the pocket. He doesn't get nervous. He did a better job. And I'm going to say he did a better job going through his reads and his progressions this year than he did in 2020. And that's what you want to see from him. But he occasionally, I'm going to say occasionally, he takes the check down or the shallow route a little too much. A little too much, in my opinion. I, in some ways, he's not looking deep enough for me. And again, this is something that may have been predicated by the offensive at Old Miss. He's got a quick release, though, man. He's, he's not Dan Marino, but he, the, ball getting out of, he, the ball's got a little giddy up getting out of his hand. And he kinda, he's kind of Mahomian. I've said this before, because he does a good job changing his arm angles. 
So, but his biggest problem is always going to be uh, he's not built like Malik. He's six foot one, which is probably like six feet, uh, and he's two hundred five pounds. He's he's he doesn't have that. You know, Malik Willis always looks like a fire plug, and that's why I like him. He looks like a guy that could that you know what when he's in the pocket and he's gonna. He reminds me of Lamar Jackson that when he gets out of the pocket, I am not worried what's going to happen to him if when he's outside the pocket. But like I said, it's all going to come down to my mind to arm strength. Does he have the sufficient arm strength to compete as a starter in the NFL? Because he doesn't have great size. I don't think he's going to grow any. He doesn't have great strength. And, you know, we do play in the Northeast, so it's going to get cold. And forcing the ball and throwing the ball downfield is going to be is a little bit more difficult if you don't have the arm strength when you get into November and December, uh, excuse me, November and December. But like Malik, one of his best attributes is his mobility. And like I said, he is not, I, he is in no way, in no mind, can he is ever going to be compared to Malik Willis, Lamar Jackson, Michael Vick. But he does a good job with his legs. To me, we've talked about it before. Daniel Jones has to have pre-designed plays for him to succeed. Matt Corral is like a point guard who can create his own shot. He just does not have the explosive as Malik Willis. But the kid's a leader. The kid is going to be a leader on the field and off the field, and that's what you want. People like playing for him. Uh, I still think he's got a second-round value. I, I, I mean, personally, I don't see him going in the top 32. He's got good mechanics when it comes to throwing. He's got good foot placement. He's got that quick release. But do I think he's going to be a top 32 guy? No, but I, I do think he can go around 40, 45. And I think he's like Malik is a project in the fact that Malik, though, he is a project. I believe he will turn into something beyond special. I think Matt Corral is a project that'll turn into something good. And don't forget, we may have a stream tonight at nine o'clock. I haven't decided yet. We got to see what the power holds out. And again, this is Tim on the Online Big Blue bringing the best of New York Giants sports talk entertainment. And as always, if you can like, subscribe, ring that bell, you know what it means. Love you all.